Alrighty, so I'm I'm back here, and we're gonna do this book right here. And I didn't upload yesterday because, well, simply because I wasn't home. But I did finish I did finish reading my books yesterday, and I'm still on the read. Actually, I read four books yesterday, so I can't say I read one book a day now. You know, I might have to up it to I I read two books a day, <laughs> but. But you can see the book here, The Delusions of Crowds, Why People Go Mad in Groups. So this book, so going into this book, I I wanted to learn. Because I set a goal for, or not necessarily a goal, but something I would like to learn on the book. And I thought that this type of book was going to be like War and Peace and War, where they show, well they did show examples, they showed a lot of examples, but where they show that you know why it happens, and actually they did show why it happens in this too. So, so I can't say I I fully didn't learn what I wanted to know because I did learn it. And the thing I wanted to learn was why does a group fall? And it it doesn't necessarily have to be a group because well they gave we'll we'll, we'll talk about it. they gave later examples, and I wanted to know also. Are the ways that they fall similar to an empire? Which they didn't really talk about the fall of groups in this. There were some examples, and they failed for mm, not not really the same reasons as in War and Peace and War, but I guess you could say they correlate to a certain degree. <coughs> so, and I'm not going to be answering the questions in this book. I'm just going to be talking about the parts that I like because you know we could say right now I like this book I I enjoyed the read and I actually read the first few <laughs> I read the first few chapters and by first few I mean maybe the first six six seven I read those I think word by word almost which you know I'm a speed reader so I don't always read every every chapter analytically but I really like what he was saying in this book and in the examples that he gave. Especially well since it was pertaining religion and I don't want to say I look for for reasons why religion is fake. Because yeah, this is just a, this is a great actually conversation starter. I don't want to say I look for re- reasons why religion is fake because I do well, actually, I have. I've looked for ways that religion is true. And the good in religion. Which I found in War and Peace and War. And if you haven't watched that video. Because, you know, I seem to be mentioning it quite a bit. In War and Peace and War, he stated that religion, it, it brings cooperation together. It brings trust within a group. Because they all are focusing towards one common goal. And... With that, in this, this talked about, but not necessarily the bad in religion, but kind of why it was, why we just don't know, basically. <laughs> so, well, one quote I should say. One quote that I liked, and this was in the, the introduction, if you wanted to know. It is, this is what... A uh, someone that said to Darius, or someone named Darius, said to the Greeks, and I'm I'm not sure who Darius was, but I'm pretty sure he was not not necessarily a jester, but someone of importance. He was someone of importance in the past, and what he said to the Greeks was, "You may be the most learned among humankind, but you are just as irrational as the rest of us. You are simply better at rationalizing just why." Despite all the evidence to the contrary, you are still right. Which, if you don't understand, I could just put it in other words to the way that I interpreted it. Like, with knowing this stuff, like how me, like how I imagine that humans are social creatures. Like, we're pretty much just made to to socialize. And this goes with the book I just read, but I'll do a, I'll do a separate video on that book. But, basically, we're made to, we're social creatures. And that's pretty much known among, 
I will say among the world, everyone knows we're social pretty much. But, like, I just know the science behind it. Like, how the Greeks, they can just better, they're better at rationalizing why. But the fact is still the same. Like, the fact doesn't change that we're social creatures. I can just understand why. So, it gives, you could say it's kind of pointless to, to a certain extent. But at the same time, it's not really because if you understand why, then you can understand all the other parts of it. And you can understand why certain things happen, and you don't have to be so, I don't want to say emotional, but when things happen, you don't have to be so so starstruck or so distraught, if we want to talk like that. Like, if you want to know, oh, for example, if your girlfriend left you, and you want to know why, okay, so I know that the reason that she might have left you was obviously because... She might not have been happy enough with you. Or the other guy was just, is, and we can't say is, he's just better because there's certain aspects. Like, and that's another thing. Everyone has their own thing that they're good at. And that's one thing I found out. And it could be something like video games like me, reading books and interpreting them, interpreting them the way that, you know, I do. But. So and then, like, I could see the social situation happening where, and, like, someone else would be, like, sad or, especially if he <laughs> liked her. Like, there's a there's a thing called one-itis where people, they, they just fall in love with the first person that they are in a relationship with, which is not a smart thing to do, especially as a, as a teenager or someone going through the college lifestyle. I don't think it's, I don't think that's worth it at all. But I, again, I could see the social situation for what it is and just in, interpret it through through rational and logical terms, which, which yeah, those are pretty much the benefits to, to knowing the, the science behind something. Yeah, I, that's pretty much the benefits to it. And there's something else, another quote I should say. Well, I can't say it's a quote. They said it was a joke, which was <laughs> a delusion shared by hundreds of people is called a cult. But if it was shared by millions of people, it's called a religion. And I could say that this is this is pretty much true. If you wanted to go, we could say it's true and whole because... Cause there's some things, like I can't really think of any cults. People think like witchcraft and witchery, which I could say, you know, we could say that's a cult, but you know, we don't really, we don't really know what they did. People just said they practiced witchcraft because they probably just weren't doing what everyone else was doing. So, well, witchcraft. When you think of witchcraft, I think of chemistry and alchemy, which, <laughs> you know, was whipping something in a stove or in a pot, I should say. Yes, a stove, when they boil the witches, you know, we just don't know what witches did in the past. Maybe we did. If they brought upon a disease on the civilization, when in reality it was just because of germs or the food was contaminated and poisoned. Now, what other parts of this book that I like? I like, man, this whole book. I can go on for, I think I can go on for hours about talking about this book. But the part that I liked, they talked about Ezekiel and and whatever he did. I'm pretty sure it was Judaism. Judaism. I'm not sure how, I'm not sure about the pronunciation, but Judaism, Judaism. And about how he... I'm pretty sure it's in the book of Genesis, too. If I don't know the exact name, but I know Genesis is in the name. But basically, he perceived. Well, in my opinion, I think he created religion, which, like I said in the War and Peace and War video, whoever created religion is a genius because that brought people together. And this is the good in religion. As I said earlier in this video, it brings people together. So Ezekiel, he found religion through a dream. Which, I I can't say I've studied dreams, but 
I've read multiple. Four, I could name them off the top of my head. I've read four books on, on sleep, and dreams. So, with that, I know that dreams. Well, the theory that I believe in, I can't say most belief, but with the books presented to me. In one of them, that's what they most believe, which was the social simulation theory, which basically. Basically, it's just that our dreams are basically a social simulation of what we want to happen. Or things that just random social simulations. Random. It's just us doing mundane things and just normal things. So, for instance, I had a dream about just playing basketball. And the next thing you know, I had a dream about going to the store. Like, it's, our dreams are basically just social simulations of, of random things. And that's what I believe, that's the theory that I believe with, with dreams. Some people say dreams are, are like this, what, what they thought in the past, that dreams are, and cultures believe this too. They believe that dreams are, are very important in, in finding yourself and finding your character and what you should do and things of the such. So, he found, he had this dream. Ezekiel, and he we don't even know if he wrote the book. <laughs> I think that's that's pretty funny in itself, which he probably didn't write the book. If if we don't know, whenever I hear I don't know, I interpret it as no, because no is used in the sentence. So when they say they don't know, I say no, he didn't write the book. So I can't say Ezekiel wrote it. Someone interpreted his dreams though. And we don't even know if it was if it was his dreams. You know, he could have just made this up. And that's the thing with religion. It's all you know, like I know the good and bad, so I can I can do it freely without any I can live my life freely now without any you know, negative repercussions on my conscience. But he had the dream, and you may know it, about the four creatures. <laughs> yeah, about the four creatures. And he said that, basically, the world was going to end at a certain time period. And they would have to look for, we don't know. We Honestly, I, I can't lie, I kind of forgot too. Which, it's kind of weird for the first time. So... Later on in this book, <laughs> just know that we're gonna we're just gonna keep it short. Now I've been talking, I've been rambling a lot, and we're just gonna go into a, a quick summary. Basically, this is about Jesus Christ too and the coming of God. He probably won't come back if he was alive at all, and. <laughs> And oh, this is a funny fact: thirty-five percent of people say that Jesus or Jesus Christ will turn in their lives. This was an international study, which, when you think about it, I don't think thirty-five percent of the world are Christians. So I don't know how that number is true, but I interpreted that as the United States. No, the United States is very culturally diverse. I can't say the United States. 35% of people think Jesus Christ is coming back. And that's what people have been thinking every year for a long time. <laughs> and that's what was shown in this book. He gave very clear examples of the 1500s, all throughout the 1500s, the 1600s with the books, 1700s, 1800s, 1900s. And even the 2000s, I remember not that Jesus Christ was coming back, but that something was going to happen December 21st. And I think 2012, someone said 2012 something. See, I'm not too sure about this new stuff, but in also, I don't I don't know what the new age is. They they talked about new age in this book. And I don't know what new age is. So if someone can can help me find out what new age is so I can have more. More information on that. Just to just to know. 
And this guy. Well, what are the parts that I like about this book? Oh, yeah, we could talk about this. Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan. He, the, a president for the United States. I'm not sure what years. I'm pretty sure in the 80s and 90s. Maybe early 2000s. Throughout that time period. He was a believer in in the story of Ezekiel and his interpretation of the dream. Where he said, you know, Armageddon. Which basically what the first half of the book was talking about. And I feel like that led to his downfall. Because he couldn't have a a clear mind for what was happening. And I don't know... I don't remember exactly his downfall. We learned about it last year in in honors U.S. history, but I, I can't really remember. And this book didn't really state it either. Just that he learned some things. He he watched a movie, and <laughs> it's funny because hey, movies must movies gotta be right, right? <laughs> and that's kind of the same thing I think. Now with books. Like I don't think these books are obviously not not every book is politically correct. It's kind of the opinion you derive from it, the meaning you get from it. So I can't really take what these books say to heart, but I feel like I could believe them more because I think like I read a book in the past and they talk about how the written word is just more powerful than than anything, like with laws, laws that are wrote down in the Bible. People believe the Bible because it's written. Like, that's kind of the, how I see books. Like, they're more, books are more, are more true in a sense, simply because they're wrote down. Which, <laughs> it's kind of, it's pretty ironic that I'm talking about the delusions of crowds. And, you know, I kind of believe what I read in books. Like, this in itself, this book in itself could be an indoctrination but I like th- I like the theories presented in it. I really like the theories presented in it. And I pretty much already gave the meaning of this book, which was just to see. You can see things with a clear mind once you have both the positive and the negative. And I can't say clear mind because, you know, you don't really want your... Our minds aren't always clear, basically. But you could... Just don't take, don't listen to everything that that we hear. And also, before I end this off, another quick tip is just don't li- don't always listen to the person in front of you. Just some some quick life lessons. Go quick life lessons. Try and derive your own your own facts from what well, your own facts and opinions from the situation and whatever it pertains before you make the assumption that something is true or that something is false.